Hi everybody and welcome back to my booktube channel. My name's Leora and I talk on here about books, reading, writing and all sorts of stuff. Today I first want to start off this vlog with a thank you because some of my videos lately have been doing very well and there's a lot of new subscribers joining us. I'm really happy about that so welcome to all of you. I'm so happy you're here. I've been filming some clips here and there for the last few days. You saw me setting up my Christmas tree. I've also done some Christmas shopping and I want to film a little Christmas shopping haul later. I'm not sure when and then I'll also do some Christmas decorating for the apartment. I've done like the Christmas tree but apart from that I haven't done a lot of decorating yet. But first I want to update you guys on my reading. I've been trying to film this little sit down clip for such a long time just kept not getting to it because I've been really busy with work and Etsy and stuff but I'm flying through my read right now because I'm absolutely adoring this read so I was like okay I need to film the clip before I finish the book and there won't be anything to talk about anymore. <laughs> but first we have some book mail to start today off with. This is a package from a friend of mine from Ema. And she wrote her own book. Uh, as some of you may know, I'm also a writer, I'm in a writing group, and I'm currently working on my own essay collection. And some of the other people from my writing group have also published works. And this is Ema's work. I'm really excited to read this. Not sure when I'll read it, but I thought it would be fun to unbox it on the channel. It's just always a good time to support my fellow writing friends. Oh, they got a whole note and everything. Dear Leora, it's so much fun that you bought my little book. I'm, I'm translating this live from Dutch, okay? So I'm sorry if it's wrong. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful thing that she can lay down in your beautiful autumnal house. Yes, she can lay down in my beautiful autumnal house. I'm also very curious to see what your future novel will look like, probably with a lot of beautiful illustrations. I wish you a lot of fun reading it and I'll see you soon. Lots of love, Ema. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Okay. That is so sweet. I'm gonna save this note and I'm just so happy to have found such a beautiful community of fellow writing friends and yeah, just really thankful. Okay, so this is her bundle. It's in Dutch and it's called Fundering, which would be foundation, I guess, in English. But not like the foundation you put on your face, like the foundation for a relationship or the building of a house, I guess. I'm so sorry, Eamon. <laughs> I'm trying my best to do life translation here. It looks stunning. I love the design. I love this colour. This is like my dream colour for my bookshelves or my kitchen. Like I want to do the Dakota Johnson kitchen. This is it. This is the colour. Oh, and it's got sort of print things going on on the inside and... A beautiful old school font. I know that this has English and Dutch writing both. It just looks stunning. I'm so excited to read this. It looks very creative and very cool. Can't wait to dive in when I do and add it to my collection of sort of small indie authors publications because that's just always so much fun to have that little special collection. So thank you so much, Ema. Really happy to have this. And of course, I'll update when I do read it eventually. Then I want to talk about a read I've just finished. So this is Dark Archives by Megan Rosenblum. I've bothered all my friends during the week I was reading this with this book and it's atrocious insides. Just because I needed somebody to talk to about what was happening in this book. So this is all about this one researcher's journey into anthropodermic bibliopedia. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> into anthropodermic biblioplegy? Is that how you say it? I've been reading it this whole time, but I don't know how to pronounce it actually. Anyway, Megan Rosenblum is a researcher and she's looking into books made of human skin. And so in this novel, she sets out to sort of do a discovery in different universities and different research institutes to see if the books they have are actually made of human skin. And then she also dives deeper into the ethical and moral practices and what people considered right and wrong back in the day. And she also looks into different specific cases of anthropodermic bibliopedia. Bab bibliopedia? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is also a subject that is quite serious because of course it does concern human remains in a sort of way. And so she does dive deeper into the ethics of it at several points. I'm not sure what I felt about the way she did this because at some points it felt like she really had her own opinion and that sort of cycled through the story and I wasn't sure if that was meant to happen. So for example, there are some researchers that she talks to in this novel who are like, I feel the book should be buried because it's human remains and I feel that would be most respectful. And then the other opposing argument is, of course, but it also belongs to our history and sort of we should learn from it and maybe keep it on display for all other people to learn from it. And you can really feel throughout the novel that that's what Megan Rosenblum thinks. And I'm not sure if that's the best way to go, but I do have to say I did really enjoy this novel because it's just really well written. It almost reads like a fictional story. It's easy to get invested in. It's also fascinating and intriguing in a sort of strange way, even though most of the examples of anthropodermic bibliopedia are absolutely horrifying in this novel. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Either way, a really, really fascinating read that I really enjoyed. And it's also just a really good time to read about a researcher diving deeper and deeper into this 
dark subject. That's just really interesting and something I really enjoyed. Then for my work, I'm currently doing a few TikTok jobs for one of the Dutch main book suppliers, Libris. For them, I picked up Fairy Tale by Stephen King. But to be honest, I was really happy to pick up this book because it's one I've been wanting to read anyway. As you can see, I've made lots of progress. I'm almost at the end of it. And I kept wanting to start this vlog earlier, but the time just flew by and I just kept reading more and more. Like there was one day where I think I read 250 pages of this novel. That's how invested I was. I'm so invested in this story. I think this is going to be my new favourite book of the year, which is really surprising because I never thought me and Stephen King would vibe that well, but I'm absolutely adoring this book. If you were thinking about picking it up, but you weren't sure, this is me telling you to pick it up right now. Like right this second. Order it from your local indie bookstore, support them and buy this book. So in one of my most recent videos, I talked about some fantasy reads I want to pick up this winter. Thanks by the way, for all the love on that video. Make me really happy. And I also talked about Fairy Tale by Stephen King. This book is about Charlie Reed, who's an average scholar. He goes to high school, he's just having a normal life. He did have kind of a tragic childhood as his dad used to be an alcoholic and his mother died really young in a car accident. But his dad swore off the booze and since then they've been doing pretty well. Charlie's sort of the perfect kid but he feels like he made a bargain with God in order to stop his dad from drinking so he feels like he has to be the perfect kid. So when he comes home one day, I think it's from football practice or something like that, he hears a dog whining um, near the scary house on top of a hill near the end of the street and then he goes in to the yard to investigate and he finds out that Mr. Bowditch has fallen down. Mr. Bowditch is this very old man that lives on this mansion on the hill and his dog, Radar, is whining and she's just like calling out for help. And so Charlie helps them and he ends up calling an ambulance. He saves Mr. Bowditch's life. From here on out, this really special connection and friendship between Mr. Bowditch and Charlie develops. And Charlie also becomes really attached to Radar, who's the cutest, bestest, sweetest dog of all fiction. I am so attached to this dog. Incredibly attached. This book also made me want to go home and cuddle my dog, like my family dog, immediately because it's just... I don't know if Stephen King has dogs, but I feel like he must have. Like, the love for dogs is so visible in this book. So if you love dogs, or if anybody you know is a dog lover, give them this book. The next bit I'm going to be discussing is a bit of a spoiler, but it's not really considered one since it's also on the back of the book. But I'm just giving you the chance to skip ahead a little bit if you really don't want to know. But, you know, you should kind of know. Anyway. <laughs> Eventually, Mr. Bowditch passes away. This is where the most intriguing part of the novel starts. He leaves Charlie a bunch of cassettes saying that in his backyard, in the shed, there's a door to another world. And of course, Charlie might go out and explore that door. Oh, I'm not saying he does. He might do it. I'm not saying anything. Anyway, this book is so good. The fantasy portion is really good, but the beginning and the suspense and sort of that friendship blossoming and the deep talks that they have together, everything is just so good. And I'm so involved. I haven't been this invested in a book for such a long time. I haven't been like this hyped about a book for a while. Like, I mean, I was this hyped about some of the witchy reads I've read, but still, I feel like this is still like ahead of all the other books. And I just keep being like sort of surprised. I keep being like, oh my God, this guy can write. And it's like, obviously it's Stephen King. Of course he can write, Leora. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I would kind of hate Stephen King. Like the only Stephen King that I've read is Misery. And I've only read like a few chapters of that. And then I was like, oh. And I have watched it, but I've not read it. And I just always found some issue with the way Stephen King writes women. It's just always a lot of boobs bouncing up and down unnecessarily. And I do have to say that is also definitely a problem in this book. Oh my God, why do every woman's boobs have to be described into detail? Why? Even if it's not like considered a sexy or beautiful character, Mr. King still feels it's absolutely necessary to describe her boobs. And it's just like, okay, yeah, the main character is 17. Maybe he is looking at boobs. I just don't know why we have to be informed of that the whole time. But I'm willing to look past that for a little bit just because the rest of this book is so magical and so good. So I can't wait to finish this and read more. But unfortunately now I have to do some work, <laughs> even though I just want to sit down and read. Like that's the mood right now. I just want to read and read and read. Anyway, I'll be getting back to pick some more Etsy orders right now. And then later I'll come to you guys with the reading updates. And I'll also do a little Christmas haul and some Christmas decorating around the house. I'm really excited for this vlog. So let's get into it. Thank you. 
I've been a bit busier than I expected the last few days. That's mainly because I'm trying to adopt a cat, which is so exciting and I just cannot keep the smile off of my face when I'm talking about it. As some of you may know, if you followed me for a while, I had a cat. I was cat sitting for a friend who had gotten allergic to her cat and she found the right medication and she had her cat back. And of course, I was really happy for them to be reunited. But ever since then, I did kind of miss having a cat around but the responsibility just seemed so big and scary. And I was like, I don't know if I can do that. And it's just, I never really felt confident enough to get my own cat, but I've been wanting it for so long now. And there's literally no reason for me to not do it. Like I can take care of a cat. I have like five plus friends who would love to cat sit whenever I need it. And since I live alone and I'm also single and I work from home, I think it would be really nice to have a companion because I do get lonely from time to time. And when I did have a cat, it definitely helped. And also I just love cats. So I really wanted to adopt a cat instead of just getting a kitten. It feels sort of comforting that the cat already has a personality that we know of. So I responded to a few cats. So I'm currently in contact with the shelter. There's already one cat I'm really hoping for. I'm not going to go more into detail yes because I just don't want to set myself and you guys up for disappointment when it turns out I'm not getting this cat you know because there's obviously like an adoption procedure and stuff like that but fingers crossed please hope with me if you have any tips for new cat mothers definitely let me know in the comments down below this might very well be the last year I have a nice Christmas tree <laughs> Anyway, I just really wanted to mention that briefly because I'm just so excited about potentially adopting a cat. So I just needed to put that out there. But that adoption and like everything having to do with it has been taking lots of time off of my schedule. But I did manage to get some reading done anyway because I'm still loving this book. I took a little break last week, didn't read as much. But then yesterday evening, I got back into it again. I'm almost at page 500 now. I had really not anticipated being into this novel as much as I am. I do have to say, as soon as this ventured over into like full on high fantasy instead of sort of urban-esque fantasy, I did enjoy it a bit less. There was this sort of game element to the story and I was like, mm, I'm not that into this. But then now it's sort of coming back into the whole fairy tale territory again. And I'm obsessed with that, really enjoying it. So there's different layers to this book. And I really enjoyed the first sort of setup of the story. Then the middle a bit less, but now at the end, properly obsessed again. So can't wait to see where it goes and what like the big dramatic ending of this book will be. Or I'm anticipating an ending like that. It might not be like that at all, but we'll see. I love the characters. Radar is the best dog in the whole world and I love dogs so much and just this book is making me so happy. And yes, can't wait to finish it. Then I also promised you guys I'd do a little Christmas haul to show you some of the gifts I've gotten from my friends and also when I do gift wrapping and like decorating my apartment, I'd show you guys. You've already seen me set up the Christmas tree with my friends. But now let me also show you some of the gifts I got. Okay, so first I got these really cute candles online. I bought like a whole set of them. Uh, I have different ones. And it's like library candles and each candle is supposed to smell like the library of a different classics author, which I thought was really fun because almost all of my close friends are also big readers. And I decided to pick some of their favorite authors. So I have two Oscar Wilde candles. Not sure who I'm gonna gift which one because I've got several friends that are obsessed with Oscar Wilde. <laughs> I have a library of Jane Austen candle. One of my friends specifically really likes Jane Austen. So maybe she'll be getting this one, but she's also obsessed with Oscar Wilde. So it's difficult. <laughs> And then I also got a library of Shakespeare candle. I'm not sure who I'm gonna gift this to because I don't know if any of my friends really like Shakespeare, but I love these because they're like sort of personal, but still a gift, you know, that always comes in handy. And they smell really good too. I especially really like the library of Jane Austen. It smells like summer and clean, really nice. And the Oscar Wilde one is kind of more of a sort of manly, musky smell. Like I'm not sure if I'm into it. It kind of smells like an old man which I guess is accurate, sort of. <laughs> okay, then there's all my wrapping paper, which <laughs> was on top of the bag. This year I went kind of wild with gift bags. I just, I love gift bags and I love wrapping gifts. So, you know, it's my life. I get to spend my money and I bought this adorable gift bag. Look, it is so cute. It's got some tissue paper as well. And this little mushroom gift tag. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? It is, let me tell you. 
I got some of these. These were the cheap ones. I went to a budget store to get these specifically because I was like, I'm not getting the expensive ones. Then I got this little gift bag. I really think it's sort of like a really magical font. So I love that. This gift bag specifically really reminded me of my friend, so. <laughs> Then for our friend Christmas dinner, I bought us some Christmas crackers. These are stunning, look at them. They're like the prettiest ones I've ever seen. And they come with like one of those silly hats that we'll then have to wear for the Christmas dinner. And they also have a gadget in each one of these. So they're definitely like luxury Christmas crackers, which is really fun because at home, we always used to have just like Aldi ones, which are also great, don't get me wrong. <laughs> then I got this for my mum. It's to sort of have like a foot bath. <laughs> my mum loves taking care of her feet. I know this is like a weirdly specific thing to put on the ends now. I'm sorry, mum. <laughs> then this gift I got for a friend you all probably know. Um, Brit. Brit, if you're still watching, I swear to God. <laughs> so I got this for her. It's always her birthday in December. So I usually get her like a few gifts more than my other friends because it's also her birthday gift. So this is one of her gifts. And this is a set uh, of herbs in a little cute jar to make your own mold wine, which is really nice because recently we're out and we really wanted to get some mulled wine. We're on this like wintry walk. Um, they didn't have any and Britt was very upset. So I immediately thought of her because then we also talked about making it ourselves. So now she can do that. Then I got this really useless little box that I could put a gift in. It's just so cute. I just thought this would look so nice under the tree. So I had to get it. And this is some lavender sleep therapy body hand nail cream. I don't know. I was out of ideas, I guess. I already put this in the bag, but I didn't buy this just anywhere. I bought this um, at a vintage store, but this is for one of my friends. It's a really beautiful top. It's stunning and I really hope she fits it and I don't know what I'll do if she doesn't. Then I got some diffusers for like, you can put them in your toilet or your bathroom. And these especially are witchy diffusers and I thought they looked so nice. So this one says my little book of spells and the smell is jasmine and sandalwood. And then I also got one that is caramelized cherry and spice and it says, I put a spell on you. These are so stunning and they smell really good. I kind of want to put them in my own bathroom. And then last but not least, these are some Christmas gift tags. I just thought they were so cute. <laughs> oh, and I got this for myself to decorate my house with. I almost forgot. It is so adorable. I'm still not sure where I'm gonna put it. I need to like figure out what is a good spot, but it's like this little garland with pine cones and some nice sort of Christmas tree branches. And it looks really cute and I'm so excited. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but I just really enjoy stuff like this. That was my little Christmas haul and reading update. Right now I'm going to get back to work because it's a Monday and I have lots of stuff to do. And yeah, I'll keep you guys updated and I'll show you when I'm decorating the house and stuff because I know most people really enjoy me doing stuff like that. <laughs> furniture I wasn't too sure because I thought I could also put it on the shelves but I've decided it looks kind of cute here so yay
Art Night with Leo and, and Leo. Leo. <laughs> Leora makes a lot of really great art and she oh, has beautiful you. art journals thank and you. I was like, I want to make art too. I brought my own art journal. I bought this two years ago, 2020, and I didn't make any art in it, barely, uh, for two years. So we decided to get together and make a mess Yeah, and make art. <laughs> Same thing. We did make a mess. <laughs> and we made art. I've been journaling for, I think, since I was like 15 or something for a really long time. So a bunch of these quite big journals. I mean, if you follow my channel, you've seen them around. But I've been really slow with this one. I'm not sure what's up with me, but I think I'm just, I've been so busy with like life and I just mm -hmm. don't get to it. I think this one has, I started this in March, 2021. I only have like a few spreads to go. So I just want to fill it up. So I've been doing lots of collaging. Mm -hmm. This, I see like a pattern where, the, where this always happens towards the end of my journals. I start doing lots of collages because I just- Because <laughs> it's just quicker. Yeah, it's quicker. Yeah. <laughs> so I've made this sort of mushroom contraption with some leaves and this sort of floral pattern that I put in there and some stickers and this little weird moon girl. <laughs> I did just see that this totally pressed through onto the other page, which is kind of a shame. Oh, no, it, I think it adds something. Yeah, it adds? It adds okay, something. maybe. It's my, my library, my dream library. Ooh. Oh my god. I want a library of the sage green shelves. I want the Dakota Johnson kitchen mm -hmm. in the library. Yeah. I want the Dakota Johnson kitchen. Okay. That's good. Go ahead. <laughs> we could just buy one big bucket of paint. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> did. I, I use it for my kitchen, you use it for your so smart, smart thinking. So I started making a collage because I never really use my art journal a lot because I never know what to draw and I often don't like what I'm drawing. Um, so I was like, I just need to be creative and just do something. So I kind of made a collage. Interpretive art. Interpretive art, exactly. So like you can you can think of the story you feel when looking at this yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just pretty. It is. I like it. I just used pretty pictures and then put them together. And she lost the mushroom I cut out for her personally. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to use Leora's mushroom, but it's gone. I mean, these it escaped. It, it did escape. It, it escaped. ran out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I like it. There's a lot, like, I feel like mine is, like, more busy than is necessary. <laughs> yeah. This was our random art interval. We yeah. sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Check out Leo's channel. Check out Leo's channel. Check out Leo's channel. <laughs> Do you know that sometimes we have to explain to sponsors we are not the same person? Mm -hmm. We get, they confuse us. They do. <laughs> <laughs>to close off this vlog i really hope you enjoyed this little winter reading diary of mine and you had a good time seeing me hang out with friends do some journaling some reading and mostly just talking about the stephen king fantasy book i've almost finished it now it is lying somewhere around the house i think i mentioned this earlier already but i'm getting a bit disconnected from the story again so it was getting a bit slow when it got to the like true high fantasy portion then it picks up again this might be a bit of a spoiler so if you really don't want to know skip ahead but our main character has sort of escaped a really difficult situation. And now a sort of classic fantasy revolution might start happening. And I'm just not sure if that is what I signed up for. And I mostly just hope it gets resolved in like the real world where the main character comes from as well. I just wanna know what happens there. So if that part is never written down, I will be really disappointed. But I don't know yet, cause I still have to finish it. So I guess you'll see that if I upload a wrap up like after this or maybe I don't know, in my favorite reads of the year section. But so far, I've definitely enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. Hope you enjoyed me reading this book. I definitely had a good time. If you've made it all the way through and you had a good time, leave a nice candle emoji. Let me know in the comments down below what are you reading this winter. And I hope to see all of you in my next video. Bye guys.